Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 19. One moment. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. This is what the Lord laid on my heart. Refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And I believe all of us could use some refreshing. In looking up this word refreshing, it has to do with revival has to do with a cooling, a cooling off from the heat, from the trials, from the fiery trials. There is a place to cool off. There's a place to find refreshing. And according to the scripture, it comes from the presence of the Lord. Now there's some R's I'd like us to look at. Repent, return, restore, revival, refreshing. In order to experience refreshing, there's got to be repentance. There's got to be a returning to the presence of the Lord. Turn with me, if you will, to Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. We're going to begin with verse 1 of chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, we're going to begin with verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where Art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me. Of the tree, and I did eat. The Lord, his voice, was walking in the cool of the day 
And Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Where does refreshing come from? What did we learn? Repent, right? That your sins may be blotted out. For the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Where does revival come from? Where does restoration come from? Where does refreshing come from? It comes from the presence of the Lord. But the scripture says that Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Well, they're not going to experience refreshing, are they? You ever wonder why you might not be experiencing revival? Why you might not be experiencing refreshing from the Lord? Why does it seem like you're always in the heat? You're always in the hot, always in the trial. It doesn't seem like you find any reprieve. There's no, uh, it doesn't seem any let up. It doesn't seem like you can ever get any distance from the fire, from the heat. And that's because you don't spend time in His presence, brothers and sisters. you got to spend time in the presence of the Lord if you're going to experience refreshing because that's where He cools you off. That's where He restores you. That's where restoration takes place. That's where revival takes place. You cannot expect to enjoy the Lord's presence if you're hiding from His presence. And why are you hiding from His presence? Why are God's people in this hour hiding from the presence of the Lord? Same reason Adam and Eve were hiding from the presence of the Lord. Disobedience. Amen disobedience is what cuts us off from God. It's your sin that hides him from you or hides his face from you. When you look up this word presence, it has to do with the countenance of the Lord. If you are going to experience favor from the Lord, the Bible says favor is in the countenance of the king, in the presence of the king. When the Lord looks upon you with favor, you will experience revival. You will experience refreshing. You'll experience the goodness of the Lord. Just because everybody else seems to be in the fire and the heat doesn't mean you have to be. Because God will shield you. Amen? The scripture says he stood, Jesus stood over Jerusalem. And he wept over Jerusalem. And he said, how many times I would have gathered you, gathered your children, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. You would not. And we see in the book of Psalms where the Lord says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. It's under his wings that we find refreshing. It's under his wings that we find lift, where he lifts us above our problems, amen? That great eagle God will lift you up, amen, above your problems, and he'll protect you from the heat of the sun. And listen, when the enemy is going after an eagle, an eagle will head directly into the sun. God gave the eagle some special lenses when they're on their way into the sun. The enemy that's trying to follow them, they can't follow the eagle, and the eagle can go directly into the sun. And brothers and sisters, in this hour, you and I need to be going into the Son of God. We need to be fleeing into the Son of God. We need, amen, to find safety in the Lord. 
There is a hiding place in this hour, brothers and sisters, from the tempest. There is a hiding place from the storm. There is a hiding place from the heat. There is a place that's safe in the arms of God, amen, under the wings of the Almighty, under His feathers. Oh, yes. Adam, where art thou? Where art thou, Adam? I hid myself. Have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to? Have you disobeyed me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Did Adam confess? Did Adam own up to it? No. Tried to put the blame on Eve. Eve tried to put the blame on the serpent. That's exactly what's going on today. Amen. We keep passing the buck. We keep on passing the blame. And we're never willing to take responsibility for our own actions. Amen. Never willing to take responsibility for our own actions. It's always somebody else's fault. That's why God's people never develop. That's why God's people never grow up because they're not willing to admit it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and he cried out, woe is me. Woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the people in the midst of a people of unclean lips. My eyes, behold, my eyes have seen the king. Brothers and sisters, when you are in the in the presence of the Lord and looking into the face of Jesus and his eyes behold you, you will see your need, amen? You won't see the need of others, but you'll see your own need. You'll recognize your own shortfallings. You'll realize that you need to measure up. Listen, God can't use somebody that first he has not straightened out. Amen? God has to get you and I straightened out first before we'll ever be able to be used to help get others straightened out. You can't expect other people to listen to you if you're not listening to God. Amen. You got to be a leader. You got to be leading by example. Ministers that actually live the life, ministers that actually live in the presence of God, They have the authority to lead others into the presence of God. Amen. There's a lot of false ministers in this hour that are leading people astray. There's a lot of ministers, false ministers in this hour that are clouds without water. They empty words, empty promises, making merchandise of God's people, but they're not leading the sheep beside the still waters. They're not causing them to sit down, to lay down, amen, in green pastures and leading them beside the still waters and God to restore their soul for his name's sake. There's a lot of sheep in this hour that are not experiencing refreshing from the presence of the Lord. It's either disobedience or it's because the shepherd that's shepherding you doesn't know how to lead. He doesn't know how to bring you into the presence of the Lord. Amen. There is refreshing in this hour. I believe that many of my listeners experience refreshing. You experience revival. You experience a strengthening and an encouragement from this ministry. That's not because of Brother Joseph. That's because Brother Joseph is in the presence of the Lord, brothers and sisters. It's because I dwell in his presence. Amen. And you can too. You can come and dwell and abide in the presence of the Lord all the days of your life, brothers and sisters. In the house of the Lord you can abide even as David found amen you don't have to go in and go out and come in and go out you can come in and stay in I looked up this word cool 
in the original Hebrew, where the scripture talks about the cool of the day in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, it has to do with someone that's on the outside. They're not inside, they're outside. Notice what it says. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. But Adam was not experiencing or enjoying the cool of the day. Amen. He was not enjoying the presence of the Lord. Listen to me, folks. You can name the name of Christ. You can do all the religious things. But if you're not in the presence of the Lord, you're not going to experience restoration. You're not going to experience revival. You're not going to experience refreshing. And in order to experience refreshing, revival, you've got to repent. You've got to return. And you've got to be willing to be restored. You can go on saying, oh, it's all fine, I'm blessed and everything's fine. But brothers and sisters, if you really would like to enjoy his presence and the refreshing that comes from his presence where the Lord takes the edge off, amen, from the heat of the day, from the fiery trials, then you've got to be honest with yourself that you need to repent and you need to return and you need to be restored to experience the reviving of the Lord, to experience revival and refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Now let me just tell you this. You don't get to just come into his presence anytime you want. You got to come when he calls. The scripture says when the times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. You look this up in the original Greek, it means appointed times, specific times. And this is in direct correlation with the word of God, with the voice of God. You see, you've got to listen to his voice to come into his presence You've got to listen and obey his voice to come into his presence. And the scripture says that Adam and Eve heard his voice, but they hid themselves. And when you hear God's voice and you hide yourselves, you will not experience refreshing. You will not experience revival because until you obey his voice and return, repent and come back and be restored, brothers and sisters, you can't experience refreshing. We would like to experience the refreshing of the Lord. We'd like to experience the blessing of God without repentance, right? We don't want to have to repent. But what does the Lord say? Remember from whence thou art fallen and do your first works over again. I have somewhat against you. You've left your first love. Amen. It's time to return to your first love. Come back into his presence. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Amen. And his countenance is favor. There's favor in the eyes of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Glory to God not going to belate this message. I'm not going to drag it on. Brothers and sisters, I believe the message has been given. Amen. It's up to us if we're going to obey. Is there a longing in your heart? Is there a longing in your spirit? Do you remember what it was like to be in the cool of the day? Do you remember what it was like when you walked with God in the cool of the day, Adam? Do you remember what it was like, the refreshing, the coolness, and it couldn't have gotten any better? Do you remember, Adam, as you walked along and you listened to the voice of God and he would was teaching you and you were learning and the relationship was just harmonious. Amen. There was harmony between you and the Lord, but something has happened between you and God and it's not God that's done anything, Adam. It's you. You disobeyed him. You did what he told you not to do. Amen. And you will not admit it. You won't admit it, Adam. See, Adam never admitted it, and he was shut out. God condemned Adam and Eve. Neither one of them 
admitted it. They ne- neither one of them confessed what they had done. They passed the buck. They passed the blame. Read the scripture. The Bible says they never confessed their sins. And there are multitudes today that will not confess their sins. And because of that, you will be shut out. You will be cut off. And you will not enjoy the garden of God. You will not enjoy the presence of the Lord. You will not enjoy his kingdom. You will not enter in into life. You will not enter in to the joy of the Lord. You will not enter in to the garden of of God. Brothers and sisters, you'll be shut out forever in eternity if you will not confess your sins. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Adam and Eve never confessed. They passed the blame. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. And the Scripture says God drove them out he drove them out and he placed he placed an angel with a sword that turns every which way to keep the way of the garden listen to me the tree of life is still in the garden it's still in paradise it's still in the presence of God but the Bible says God's only going to give you a right to the tree of life if you are an overcomer brothers and sisters you've got to overcome self you've got to overcome sin you've got to overcome the world you've got to overcome the devil and you've got to overcome even your own pride amen if you have fallen short of the glory of God if you have turned from the Lord if you've missed God if there's somewhere where you're not obeying the Lord confess that stop pointing the finger at somebody else it's not somebody else's fault it's not somebody else's problem Amen. It's your fault. It's your problem, Adam. Adam, you're the one that God told you. Don't even touch it. Leave it alone. Stay away from it. But Adam, you listened to that woman. You listened to her as she was the weaker vessel. It's not her fault, Adam. Stop blaming everybody else for your failures. You will never grow. You will never develop and you will not spend eternity with God in his garden. Listen to me, people. If you're going to enter into life with the Lord, you've got to be honest. Amen. It's not that you've sinned. It's not that you've done wrong. It's that are you willing to repent of it? Are you willing to admit it? Will your pride allow you to admit it? The Bible says that David, David conspired against one of his best men and had Uriah killed. Listen to me. Uriah was killed. He was a godly and a good man. And David had him killed so that he could hide his sin. Listen to me. It was a heinous crime that David committed. This was one of God's men. This was the king of Israel. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. How can a man like that be a man after God's own heart? Because David confessed it. Because David said, Oh God, create within me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. Amen. David did not go on in his delusional thinking that somehow because he was king, because he was the man that God chose to be over Israel, that he did not have to repent. The Bible says that David went down into the threshing floor. Amen. And he disrobed of his kingly garments and his crown and his crown he got down in the threshing floor and he repented amen he sought after God until God answered until God restored him 
David was a man after God's own heart. It's not because David didn't make mistakes, not because David didn't even commit a cruel and a heinous crime. It's not the crime, it's not the sin that keeps you out of heaven. It's when you won't confess it. Many of those today that think that they're going to be kept out of heaven because of a sin they've committed. Listen to me. It's not your sin that's going to keep you out of heaven. It's you that's not willing to admit it. You're not willing to confess it. My little children sin not. But if you do, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. If we confess our sins, He's faithful. He's faithful. I said He's faithful. He's faithful. Amen. To forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, bless His name. God, God is saying right now, where art thou? Where art thou? Don't be like Adam. Don't try to pass the buck. Don't be like Adam. Don't try to point your fingers. Brothers and sisters, confess your sin. That's all he's looking for. That's all that God is looking for. Jesus went to the cross To wash away your sins. That's not what's keeping you out of heaven. It's your pride. Amen. It's your pride. It's that which is in you that thinks that you're better than those that have to confess their sins. Amen. It's it's that which is in you, that self-righteous nature. There's something within you you think, I don't have to go the way everybody else goes. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we all have to go the way of the cross. God is no respecter of persons. Where art thou, Adam? Where art thou? And the Lord is saying that right now. Just replace Adam with your name. Where art thou? When's the last time you walked with God in the cool of the day? When I looked up this word cool, it means to be shut out. It means to be outside the presence of God. Amen. Adam was not walking with God in the garden in the cool of the day. The Bible says he heard his voice. Adam was outside the presence of God. He could hear his voice. But he couldn't get back into his presence. And thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. That brings us back into the presence of a holy God. A loving God. Amen. In his presence there's fullness of joy. There's cooling. There's refreshing. There's revival. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve, like so many today, oh, we'll just make ourselves some aprons. Listen to me. Adam and Eve covered themselves with fig, with fig leaves. But the scripture says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Listen to me. God slew Amen. He slew the animal that the skins came from that covered Adam and Eve. But was it enough to bring Adam and Eve back into the presence of God? They were still shut out. Even though the provision had been made and even though they were wearing the skins that God had provided for them, they were still cut out. They were still being shut out. They were still drove out. Why? They were drove out because they would not confess it. They would not admit the truth. They would not tell God what they had done. And this is a generation that thinks they don't have to admit their sin. They can go on and continue to sin and add sin to sin. And they think they can keep going and never have to confess their sins. But I'm here to tell you, if you don't confess your sin, 
sins, you will not enter his kingdom. You won't walk with him in the presence of God. You won't walk with him in the cool of the day. You look up this word cool, it has the same idea as the word revival, refreshing. And you look up the word refreshing and has the same idea as the cool of the day, which means to be outside. You see, why would the Bible say that you'd have to repent and your, and your sins be blotted out if there wasn't a need to repent? You see, the refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord requires repentance and a blotting out of our sins. If we're going to come into the presence of the Lord, there's got to be confession of our sins. Amen. And I'm not talking about something superficial. I'm not talking about something on the surface. I mean, you really got to get real. You got to get honest with God. Amen. Adam, we're out there. Oh, I'm hiding myself from you, God. Why? Because I disobeyed you. Because I did what you told me not to do. Adam, did you eat of the tree? I told you not to even go near it. Yes. Things would have went a whole lot different if Adam would have just admitted what he had done. But because he did not admit it, humanity has been shut out ever since. We've all been outside the garden. But thank God for that last Adam, Jesus. Amen. That did always those things that pleased the Father. Amen. And through Jesus. There's a doorway. There's a gateway back into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. To walk with him in the cool of the day. All because of the blood. All because of the blood. We can enter into life. We can enter into the joy of the Lord. All because of his sacrifice because of Jesus' obedience. Amen. Adam disobeyed God. Separation from God. Jesus, the last Adam, obeyed the Father. And now we can come back to God. But you got to confess your sins. You see, confession is made unto salvation. You're not going to hear the charismatics teaching that today, that you got to repent of your sins. you got to turn from your sins. You won't hear them talking about confession of your sins. That's the one thing the devil keeps them away from because many of those ministers today have sin in their own lives. And they won't confess their own sins. So they're not going to try to get others to confess their sins. But that's the one thing that keeps us out of the cool of the day. The presence of God. That refreshing, that coolness that comes from God. Can you hear the rich man in hell? Send Lazarus with one drop of water to cool my tongue. For I'm tormented in this flame. Just one job to cool my tongue. There is no refreshing. There is no coolness. There is no reprieve. When you leave this world without God. I can't sugarcoat it, people. I cannot sugarcoat the gospel. Your souls are at stake. You must confess your sins. Just because you hear the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day means nothing. 
Adam could hear his voice, but he hid himself. Are you hiding yourself, friend? Are you hiding from the only one that loves you? Are you hiding from the Creator? Are you hiding from your Creator? Are you hiding from your first love? Remember from whence thou art fallen and return. Repent, return. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this again as I'm closing. Adam could hear the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. But he wasn't enjoying his presence. I see so many today not enjoying the presence of God. Sometimes I say, God, why do I get to enjoy your presence when all these others don't? Why is it that they murmur and mumble and complain? But God, there's such a coolness and a refreshing in your presence, God. I can't find myself to complain and murmur at you, God. Because he's so good. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't dare, dare to charge God foolishly. I don't dare to murmur at God. And when you're walking in bitterness, amen, when you're walking in unthankfulness, when you're walking, amen, in a sorrowfulness that doesn't bring glory and honor to God, that's exactly what you're doing. You're dishonoring God. You're dishonoring. You're bitter at God. You blame God and you blame everybody around you. But you're not willing to admit you blew it. You're the one that walked away. You're the one that fell away. You're the one that stopped praying. You're the one that stopped reading your Bible. You're the one. You. Thou art the man, David. You're the one, David. David admitted it. When Jesus, his countenance, his eyes looked upon Peter, the Bible says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. If you're listening to this broadcast and you've been listening even for the last week or so, you can see the same message. God's speaking. He's calling to repentance. Amen. Because when you repent and your sins are blotted out and you're converted, you can enjoy the refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. And that's what Jesus said to Peter. When thou art converted. When you're really converted, you'll become an encourager. You'll become a strengthening. You'll be a strength to God's people. Amen. Oh yes, not only that, but you'll be one that brings restoration. The ministry of reconciliation. You won't be with other ministers pointing your finger at somebody that's fallen. That's not spiritual. That's worldly. That's carnal. God forbid these ministers today that stand around and point their finger and look down on others and don't offer them a hand to get up. The ministry of reconciliation is what God has given to us as ministers. You that are spiritual, restore such a one. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you join me in the Lord in his presence? Will you come? 
Will you admit what you've done? Will you confess your sins and come back into the presence of the Lord? Is it worth being driven out from his presence forever? Is it worth it to not be able to have a right to the tree of life forever and ever? He's calling. He's calling. The Lord pleads with you. He's pleading with his people. But not only with his people, the Bible says he's pleading with humanity. Don't tell me. Don't tell me God is not love. Don't tell me that God is not love. He's willing that none should perish. Don't tell me God is not love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You may not value his son, but he does. Amen. He gave his only son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. I'm going to say it as I'm closing. Are you sure your sins are under the blood? Are you absolutely positive? Are you absolutely Sure that you've confessed your sins. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have, He will restore you and He will revive you and He will cause you to be refreshed and restored and revived and you will live in His presence. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come home. Come home. You that are weary, come home. Tenderly, Jesus is calling come home come home hallelujah come home come back into his presence come back into the ark of safety come back come home come into the father's house Hallelujah. Don't be shut out. Don't be one of those that's on the outside looking in. Be one of those that's on the inside looking out. Hallelujah. And not looking out because you can't wait to get back out, but looking out because you're praying for those that are still without. (laughs) Because you carry a burden. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.